Hey everybody, Syntax77 here, out on a nice, brisk winter day, and it got me thinking, maybe I should do a video to share with some of you out there who may be interested in what I would call my deep winter hammock camping system. Now, what do I mean by deep winter? Well, I'm here on the mid-Atlantic coast, uh, right smack dab in the middle. So winter out here can kind of go both ways, depending on two things, really, or a lot of things, but if I go north towards Canada, a lot colder than, say, south towards uh, Tennessee, North Carolina, Smoky Mountains, a lot warmer. And then on top of that, just the variability that comes with, well, weather, nature, life in general. So by deep winter, I mean definitely below freezing consistently, if not even lower, probably in the teens, maybe approaching zero, especially if I'm going up north, probably in the negatives below zero, like New Hampshire. I've had certainly trips like that come upon me. And then on top of that, I'm usually picturing when it comes to what I call deep winter, lots of snowpack, perhaps feet of it on the ground. I'm bringing stuff like snow shovels and additional gear to deal with harsh winter conditions, basically. I'm bringing snowshoes, crampons, perhaps different traction devices like that. Now, those are things that are kind of outside of the scope of this video. Today, what we're talking about specifically is my sleep system or dwelling system for hammock camping and what I would do in a deep winter scenario for that. Now, if you've watched some of my videos before, in winter, you'll notice that this doesn't look like what I always use. This has been shown in some of my videos, but perhaps like last year, I did a couple trips where I did not use this. What this is right here is a winter sock, and we'll get into that. Now, I've done other videos where I use what is called an overcover. So picture on a hammock, and we'll see my hammock. It's underneath here in a moment. On a hammock, usually there's a bug net on top. I have like a Dutchware chameleon that has a solid top cover that traps some heat inside the hammock with me. But this sock system basically goes one step further. So the other system I would use for what I call like a regular winter trip, close to freezing, maybe above, not quite as windy, not quite as harsh, I would use that system. This here is gonna give me a lot more protection. And what it really is, and I'll show you everything, this is called a sock. Now, everything I'm about to show is really, I believe, yeah, by just two companies. All the hammock stuff is by a company called Dutchware Gear, and all of the insulation stuff is by a company called Hammock Gear. The sock is a Dutch winter sock. There's two versions, a summer version and a winter version this is the winter now it's made out of a wind and water resistant argon sill material and it basically envelops the entire hammock to keep the wind off of me now some of you might be thinking oh it also keeps uh, rain and moisture off of you as well that is true it offers some additional protection from that but it is not intended to just put this on and be completely protected from the elements in terms of precipitation and whatnot and as you notice, I don't have a tarp, but I don't want to mislead anybody. I just wanted to keep this video simple so I don't have a tarp broken out here today. Normally, I'd obviously have my tarp above me. I usually use a Cuban fiber tarp, and I don't have a tarp with doors, which basically, for those uninitiated, uh, doors basically give you the ability to close off the ends of your tarp so you have four sides all protected from the wind, rain, etc. I don't do that. I don't own a tarp with doors. So when I'm running a tarp system, and I perhaps will do a video in the future specifically on, uh, say, more harsh weather conditions for tarps. Maybe I'll do that, and if I do, I'll link it. But I didn't break out the tarp today because I really use it the same way I do in summer or three-season situations. Although, I'll probably pitch it down a little lower, like you may have seen in some of my other videos if you've watched some of my other stuff. That'll keep additional wind off of me, but for the most part, it's just a regular tarp setup. So we're skipping over that today and we're going right into this system here. So back to the sock. Now the sock, like I said, is the winter version versus the summer. And what's the difference? Well, the summer version is kind of split in half and it would have a mesh bug net on top and the solid cover on the bottom. I have accidentally brought that on winter trips before, and I'll say for anybody out there that's not expecting to go super cold, I'll give you this little anecdotal piece of evidence. I went on a trip where I tried to bring this sock, and I ended up bringing my summer sock, which like I said was half mesh bug net, and it ended up being in the teens. Surprisingly, we were down in Virginia, but it got that cold, and I was like, oh no, I brought my 
summer sock. What do I do? Well, I just flipped it over so the mesh was underneath of me and the solid part was on top and that retained the heat in there. I did fine and that was down to around, I'd say around 14 degrees or so on a couple of those nights. Ooh, a little chilly around here. Which means that I have a super amount of confidence in this full winter sock system right here for going down to zero and below. Now, there is a little bit of venting on it. You'll notice it's adjustable. I can twist it. It's a lot easier actually from inside. You just kind of grab two sections and rotate it. It's a little slower from outside, but you'll see as I pull it, it comes around and there is a little bit of section here that has the mesh on it. That allows some condensation to escape from your breath, body heat, etc. so you don't get too clammy in there and it breathes, but it still retains a decent amount of heat, which is great. I have found this to be pretty good. Now, sometimes uh, my face will get a little cold depending on where the wind's coming from. And again, I do have a tarp without doors on it. So what you can do in that situation, if you find the condensation is not a real big problem or you're just going with the lesser of two evils, when you're inside, just rotate it so that it looks like it did when I started here and you get that mesh underneath of you and your face is blocked from the wind. There you go, you're good to go. So I'll open this guy up now and I'll show you what's inside, which is the hammock body. Now I will point out, like I said, there's two things kind of going on here. What I'll call the hammock system, which is the hammock itself, the sock and the suspension these straps here, and then the, what I'll call the insulation system. The hammock system, actually, everything here, I priced it out, it's about 115 bucks or less. Not too bad. The insulation, whew, we'll get into that a lot more. Over the years, I've invested and I've got some pretty top of the line stuff, but staying warm in harsh conditions is important. And this system, I would be confident in easily if I was expecting even up to, or I should say down to negative 10, 10 below zero Fahrenheit, I would have no problem bringing this system. If it went down to negative 20 in a pinch, I would say I'd get through it using this system. I might put a hot water bottle with me or something like that, but just keep that in mind when I'm going through this. Um, there are some choices and options for price, but when it comes to the hammock system, this is about pretty bare minimum what I'm showing you in terms of cost, I mean, for a little over a hundred bucks, you got a lot of capability. Now you'll see in here, I pull this back. I got drawstrings on it. It's wide at one end. It's kind of like a cone. It's wide at one end with the drawstring. Underneath here, you'll notice no bug net, right? No need for that. I've got the sock here. Now I should also mention the total weight for the whole hammock system is about a pound and three quarters or one pound, 12 ounces, or for the metric system, I suppose that would be uh yeah. So underneath is just a dead simple netless hammock. And this one in particular is from Dutch Roar Gear. It's the Argon material. It's made out of nylon, but it feels a lot like cotton. I like it. And it's a 10 foot version, which is another point I should point out. These socks, which is a key component of this system. I really like it for super cold situations. They come in 10 foot or 11 foot versions, depending on whether or not you have a 10 foot or 11 foot hammock, or perhaps you have 10 and a half foot, in which case I'd go with 11 foot because I did try that out and it didn't work so well with my 10 and a half foot hammock. I bought this back when I was a little less familiar with my preferences, if you will, when it comes to hammock camping. I've since learned that I like 11 foot hammocks. So if I were to redo this, I would get the 11 foot version for an 11 foot hammock, but in this case, it works fine. Now there's another reason that I may want to upgrade in the future. Back when I bought this sock here, it wasn't an option, but nowadays you can have Dutch install a zipper on the side of this. When you check out, you just ask for that option and then you can have a zipper to get in and out. Now, why is that important? Because as you saw, I had to pull this back and I'll show you a little bit more later, but when you're in there, you kind of sit up and pull this thing over your head. Not the end of the world, but depending on your body type, injuries, anything like that, it can be a bit of a hassle. If you have the zipper mod, you can set it up outside and then use the zipper to get in and out. I would say if I was buying it nowadays, I would get the 11 foot and I would definitely get that zipper. It's well worth the $15 additional price or whatever it is. So anyway, underneath here, I have that hammock body, which I can use in the summer for lounging and whatnot. But right now it is my winter hammock. And that's pretty simple, solid, argon hammock underneath there. On the outside, you see I have the Hammock Gear Zero Degree Incubator. This is where the, uh, the money comes into play. 
It took me a while to invest in this. If you remember my earlier videos, you can get away with it. I did trips not as cold as I'm anticipated to do with this system, but uh, let's see. When I did that Adirondacks video that's pretty popular, I did just two pads underneath of me. Not the end of the world. It worked. Got the job done, and I was down into maybe the 30s. But this is a lot easier and envelops your whole body, traps a lot of heat, and once you get that sock on you, you really trap a lot of heat. This is the zero degree model. It's the most aggressive one that hammock gear sells. And if you're not familiar with hammock gear or you're just used to looking at commercial uh, sleeping bags, etc., you may be thinking, all right, it's zero degrees. So realistically in the real world, I'll add like 10 degrees. So I could probably take it down to 10. With a lot of the cottage vendors though, and particularly my experience with hammock gear, they really go to their rating. In fact, everybody's different now. But for me, I found Whatever the rating is, I can go about 10 degrees below that. That's why I'm personally saying I would be fine taking this to negative 10. In fact, I actually went on a trip with my friend Mike and TJ where it went down to like negative 25. Now that was in a tent, but I used this top quilt, which we're about to talk about, and it's a zero degree burrow, which is the top version that pairs with this. And I took it down to negative 25 and it was fine on top. My butt got really cold because I brought a summer sleeping pad, which was really stupid, another subject, but my top was fine. So that leads me to believe there is a ton of down in here and I would be happy with this down to a bit below zero. It's just picture a sleeping bag with no hood and no zipper. And this is the zero degree model. Now they're about 26 ounces a piece and there's no zippers or anything just that fabric there, which is probably a few ounces at most. So you're looking at 26 ounces a piece of like pure down. It's a ton of down. It's super warm. They've designed it really well so it doesn't shift around a lot. Um, I've had these for years now and I love them. I've used them in a variety of situations. They're great. When you combine it with that sock, you really got a nice warm cocoon in there. Now, I mentioned before in my other videos, less dramatic, maybe above freezing videos, like down south, I used a Dutchwork Chameleon that had the top cover on it. And a lot of guys, once they have that, they don't even think twice about worrying about a sock situation. What that does is, instead of the bug net, which would be here, it is a solid cover and it keeps the heat in. And you can get like another 10 degrees, they say, out of your setup. So if normally you were in like a 30 degree quilt, they're saying maybe you can go down to like 20 degrees, etc. One thing that I think a lot of people overlook though is convection. So while that's trapping the heat inside with you by having a solid cover over top of you, right now, and you may be able to hear it, I apologize, there's wind whipping through here right now. It's hitting this under quilt. If I was in there, my heat is trapped in between all the layers of down, which is why it's warm, right? It's trapping that warm air and slowing down or impeding its ability to escape. As that wind comes through, it's robbing me of that wind. Just like when you use a convection oven at home, it speeds up the cooking process, right? Well, this is blowing cold air and it's sucking that warmth off of this. That is not going to be helped by the solid top cover. But when I put on the sock, it blocks that wind, plus I have the tarp, which hopefully I've pitched down low. That's two separate defenses right there that I've incorporated so that I keep the wind from taking my heat away. It makes a big difference in my experience. It really does. Now you'll notice across the top, even though this is a netless hammock and you can buy these hammocks, the hammock itself, the body is like 30 to 40 bucks or something like that. Um, you can throw in a option to have the ridge line. Now there's a lot of reasons to have a ridge line. The ridge line actually adds structural support, or at least in the case of this one, because it is a structural ridge line. Whole nother topic, but what it does is it helps enable or make it easier at least to throw up your hammock and dial in a 30 degree hang angle, uh, which is about when you put your finger in a gun shape like this. And once you get in with weight, it it changes, but we're, we're close to it here for demonstration purposes. Anyway, that's what the structural ridge line mostly does. But in addition to that, you can hang an organizer on here to put gear in. So in the middle of the night, you can have your cell phone there or whatever else. And in the case of using a sock like I am here, that ridge line is what is keeping the sock off of my face in the middle of the night or whenever I'm lounging in there. So I'm just kind of in my own little cocoon. It's nice and warm, protected from the wind. The suspension system or the straps here, there's a lot of options for hammocks. There's whoopee slings, there's polyester straps like this. 
there are Kamek Python straps or something similar where it's like a bunch of loops on a most likely nylon strap that you can clip a carabiner into. In my case for winter, and I like experimenting and playing with whoopies, uh, that's a whoopie sling system, which is very light. It's basically just some rope and a small hook if you're using a whoopie hook system. Again, another subject. I like that, and it's one of the lightest systems you can get, honestly, but it works by compression, and it compresses those uh, layers of rope together, I guess for lack of a better term. Now, that can make it a little finicky to adjust, especially once weight has already been applied. In ideal conditions, it can still be finicky. If you add in frozen sleet, rain, snow, etc., eh, I don't really want to mess with that, especially when I'm wearing gloves and I'm out on the trail trying to break down camp in the morning or adjust my hammock. So for me, and you guys can chime in, maybe you have whoopee slings and it's no big deal in the winter. For me, it's worth the extra couple ounces. I just use, it's a really classic setup. The polyester strap, these are cheap too. It's probably like 10 or 12 bucks for a set of these. I got 12 footers, you can get longer if you have bigger trees in your area. As you can see around here, they're pretty small. So these 12 footers, I got a nice span and um, there's still eh, a little bit of uh, slack left on them. Anyway, I'm running those. I can quickly adjust those, even wearing gloves. Not the end of the world. And they go into cinch buckles. In this case, I have just aluminum cinch buckles. It's like five bucks for a pair of them. And I can adjust these. Now, if you want to save more weight, these aluminum ones are like an ounce a piece. If you want to cut that weight in half, but mm, probably quadruple your price, I do have some titanium cinch buckles that I like to use in the summer when I'm really shaving ounces and being a gram weenie. In the winter, I'm not quite so hardcore, and um, I'm already using that setup on another hammock that I just use for summer. So I just go ahead and go with the standard aluminum cinch buckles. Cheap, effective, easy, and I can adjust them pretty quickly with gloves on, mittens, etc. Speaking of mittens and gloves, when adjusting things at the end here, yes, I do have Dutch clips, which are little titanium clips that work really great. They've been shown in plenty of my videos before, but in my case right now, I just went with some carabiners. Now these happen to be Dutch wear gear brand carabiners. They came with my chameleon hammock. I don't know if you can buy them separately, but just a climbing grade carabiner will do the job. It goes through the loop on the end, and this allows me to quickly, with gloves or without, adjust my height on the tree. Now, without that, or a Dutch clip, it's not the end of the world. All these straps have a loop on them, the same loop I put the carabiner through. You can run through that loop, kind of like an eye. You can run the cord, or I should say the strap, through itself, and you're fine. You don't need this extra hardware. But where this comes into play and can be really nice is when you're at camp, now right here we don't have it, but let's say I had some branches above or below or perhaps both this uh, area here and I noticed that my height is off because I want to adjust my angle or whatever. Without the carabiner what I would have to do is take this off of the cinch buckle, undo it through the eye, move it, re-thread it through the eye and set it back up. Kind of a pain, especially if it's cold and you just want to get set up. So. For me, I think it's well worth the extra couple ounces, the carabiner or Dutch clip system, so that I can disconnect this and then move it around said branch or below, reconnect, that's it. It's just a couple clips and I'm done. So I do like that, particularly in the winter. A stuff sack down at the end here, that comes standard whenever you buy a netless hammock from Dutch Road Gear, he goes ahead and throws in a stuff sack to go with it. You can stuff it into itself, you just leave it right there, undo one end and you can pack it right up into that. Now, he does design them with a little bit of uh, extra leeway, if you will, in terms of space. So what I found is if you do a system like I have here that includes the sock as well as the straps, I can actually fit it all into the standard stuff sack that comes with the netless hammock from Dutch. So that's nice. It's a little bit of a squeeze with the straps, but I have gotten up to 15 foot straps in there with it as well. Although in winter, you're probably more likely to have snow, ice, stuff like that on your lines, which will melt potentially as you hike. And you may not want to have those straps in the stuff sack with your hammock. So you might be disconnecting and having them separate anyway. And there's other systems that are better for quick disconnect uh, and whatnot, but that is yet another subject, right? So that's that, and that's my hammock gear quilts. Now I did mention they are the more expensive component of this system. They're like $280 a piece. When I first started backpacking, I never thought I would ever spend that much 
on any piece of gear, let alone top or bottom quilts. And yes, you need a top and a bottom quilt. Over the years though, I've noticed the importance. And also keep in mind, these are their most aggressive cold weather ones they have and they are stuffed with down. They don't all cost that much, so maybe for your area, you can get away with a 20 degree model, 30, maybe even, well, probably not a 40. I'm not really considering that winter anymore. I started with a 40 degree model, and then you're talking like a hundred and something bucks instead. But anyway, that is an investment. There are synthetic options out there, and like I said, I used to do this myself. You can use your same camping pads if you're new to hammock camping, just throw them in there, right? I would use two of them if it's winter to get some extra protection and then just use the same sleeping bag you already have. It's not going to be very weight effective because you're laying on half of your sleeping bag and it's just being crushed and therefore useless in terms of um, insulation, which is why you would have the pad as well. That's what's keeping you warm, but it is doable. It's possible. So I would say if you're just looking to get into this and you're curious about taking your hammock out for a winter trip and you haven't bought the quilts yet, don't worry, you can get it done. But this is my ideal setup right here for a all the way down to zero, if not sub-zero trip. I'd be very confident in this system. I've used it over the years. I really like it. Now, ironically, the reason I came up with the idea for this video is because I'm about to go on a solo trip and I'm not bringing this system. I decided to challenge myself. The video's coming up. I decided to challenge myself and put myself in a scenario where I might have to go to the ground and sometimes I'd be able to use my hammock and what system would I bring and what strategy would I do to do that with the least amount of redundant weight. So in that upcoming video, you're not gonna see the system at all, um, but that's more of like a challenge situation and trying something new. But if my friend Mike, trail killer, trail slipper, whatever you wanna call him, if he called me up tomorrow and was like, dude, I got two days free, we're going to New Hampshire, it looks like it might be like zero or below in Fahrenheit, I got to scramble. This is the exact system that I'm going to grab right here. This is it. Um, it's tried. It's true for me personally. Although I will say there are many, many ways to skin a cat. So please feel free to chime in in the comment section below. Share with the other viewers as well as myself. I'm always looking to learn new stuff, approaches, strategies, etc. If you have a way that you think works better than this or different than this for cold weather camping, maybe you think the sock is not worth bringing and there's some other better system, uh, let me know. I'd be excited to check those comments out and trade some info with you guys. So there you have it, my deep winter hammock camping setup. Till next time, I'm Syntax77 and you have fun out there. <laughs>